الله يهم The notorious Grad rocket is one of the most infamous and widely proliferated multiple rocket launchers in the world. The Grad is now thought to be in the stockpiles of more than 50 countries. Meaning hail in Russian is a name that reflects the power and reach of the weapon system. Each individual Grad rocket stands almost three meters tall and weighs the same as the average adult man. A rocket leaves the launcher every 0.5 seconds meaning the entire 40 rocket salvo can be launched in 19.5 seconds. After firing, it takes just 10 minutes to completely reload the Grad launch vehicle and for the system to resume its attack. A Grad system can fire 40 rockets, one after the other, in very quick succession. Each of those rockets is 122 mm, which has a wide area effect, probably somewhere in the region of probably about uh, 20 meters by 40 meters in terms of the immediate area of the explosion. Last year, AOAV recorded 12 countries using ground launch rockets like the Grad around the world in 89 incidents. These accounted for around 1,602 people reported killed or injured, of these 85% were civilians. In populated areas, the civilians accounted for 94% of people reported killed or wounded. In lesser populated areas, that dropped to 44%. Syria, Ukraine and Yemen were the countries most affected by Grad strikes, but in this case study, AOV focused on Ukraine, where 86% of the total killed or wounded were civilians. In particular, we focused on a series of Grad rocket strikes that hit a residential area of the town of Mariupol in eastern Ukraine on the 24th of January 2015. They were fired from the northeast from an area controlled by the Donetsk People's Republic. The strike, far from any major military target, came out of the blue. For Grads to strike in such a populated area was particularly devastating. At the moment of detonation, the basic warhead scatters a total of almost 4,000 fragments, killing and injuring anyone in its midst. The area affected by the blast and fragmentation of each high explosive warhead that strikes the ground is measured at 700 meters squared. This is an area roughly equivalent to a circle with a radius of 15 meters, although Grad rockets spit most of their fragmentation effects in an area forward of where the rockets land. In Mariupol, at least 31 civilians were killed in the blast, including two children aged 5 and 15. One military serviceman was also killed, and at least 97 civilians were reported injured, but that true figure may be far higher. In total, over 50 apartment buildings and about 100 private homes were damaged or destroyed. Yeah. Ten fires were recorded following the barrage, gutting shops and homes, and 20 cars were reported destroyed as well. The nearest rocket strike to any viable military target was 700 metres away, and the entire strike covered over 2.1 square kilometres. And an examination of an individual strike shows the devastation carried out by each and every single rocket. This market in particular suffered from three direct attacks on the marketplace, and then there was a number of other attacks surrounding it. Six people were killed in this marketplace, and there was significant damage outside. Two people were killed when a grad struck this sausage store. The remaining fuel from the grad caused the stall to burn down and the surrounding containers were peppered with shrapnel. We're standing outside of Watson's Pharmacy and you can very clearly see an entry point for shrapnel from the Grad rocket. Now this occurred 65 meters from where it landed all the way over there in the marketplace. Such devastation is testimony to the impact of the Grad rockets in this area of Mariupol an attack that will leave a long and abiding scar on the soul of this city. Last year, Action on Armed Violence recorded 17 countries using mortars around the world. Over 2,000 people were reported killed or injured by these, 91% of them civilians.
When mortars were used in populated areas, 98% of victims were reported as civilians. When these were used in lesser populated areas, that fell to 65%. Iraq, Syria and Libya were the most affected. But in Syria, civilians accounted for 59% of the total recorded civilian casualties globally from mortar fire. Mortars are one of the most common weapons in Syria's conflict. They range in size from the 50mm to the 250mm used in Homs. This is a heavy 120mm mortar called the M1943. Syria has hundreds of these. Shipped mainly from Bulgaria and Russia, they are simple to transport and easy to use, and one of the weapons that the rebels have often tried to replicate. Bombs are simply dropped down a tube and fired from as far as 6.5 kilometers away. They are then quickly used again. Just one of these mortar systems could fire a new bomb every five seconds. And their potential for rapid fire means they can affect a wide area very quickly. The way that mortars are fired means they can land almost vertically. Unlike weapons fired over a shallow angle, this means they can scatter their fragmentation over almost a 360 degree area. You would be expecting potentially pretty indiscriminate effects. You're looking at something that's been fired from several kilometers away. It's lobbed itself up in an arc, come down potentially onto a fairly unsuspecting population. Um, they can be fired very quickly, so you could get maybe three or four rounds in the air simultaneously and suddenly out of nowhere they're coming down on the populated area. So inaccurate and indiscriminate are mortars. There are case studies of mortars falling from Syria into the neighbouring country of Jordan. In particular, one place stands out the most, that of the border city of Ramtha. Ramtha is a city of around 120,000 people that lies in the northwest of Jordan. It is just two and a half kilometers from the Syrian border and the town of Dara. AOV's report charts the impact of 15 explosive weapon strikes that crossed the Syrian border into Jordan between 2012 and 2015. The majority of these strikes seem to have been from mortar attacks, though not all of them were mortars, despite being described by locals as such. Some appear to have been either homemade grad-style rockets or manufactured ground-launched projectiles of unknown origin. What they shared in common, though, is they're all launched at a target without the operator being able to see where the weapon was landing. What is also unequivocal is that it's getting worse. Our report catalogued one strike in 2012, two in 2013, one in 2014, and ten strikes in 2015. In total, the land impacted by the strikes in this case study covered an area of about 60 square kilometres. There was no discernible military or strategic target within that area. The 15 strikes resulted in 13 civilian casualties, 12 injuries and one death. The most concerning was at 1pm on June the 5th in 2015, when a mortar hit the Al Harani coffee shop. The impact was focused but deadly and devastating. The mortar flew down and hit this pole here, caused traffic to expand, hitting the water butt here, breaking windows up there. A woman, around 120 meters down the street, was injured, but the vast majority of the impact went down into the cafe, where three brothers were injured, and their cousin, Aboud, was killed. Aboud al Monim Sami Harani was a 23-year-old, Jordanian student, studying to become an engineer. Around 2,000 people attended his funeral. But it was not just this life that was taken. Hundreds of lives here in this Jordanian city have been altered forever by the incoming strikes from Syria. And it is not a terror that looks set to end anytime soon.